they start off with Metroid Prime 2. Metroid Prime Hunters. Uh, oh boy. Other M. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's been a hot minute. Uh, I haven't streamed in a while, but just enjoying life. Getting catching up to Final Fantasy XIV. If you haven't played that, go play it. You like good MMO. I think it's also a MMO that values your time, so I highly recommend it. But yeah, I'll talk about that another time. Right now, I've been meaning to do this for a long time, and I consider myself Metroid fan, and even though I don't mingle a lot with the Metroid community, because there's some people who are really overreacting in certain games, and they're quite not courteous and not civil when it comes to certain games, I want to make my own. And what better way to do it with a video with y'all? I haven't done a Metroid tier list at all, mentally. I've done it, and if you can see, I've done it differently. Uh, some people say this game is trash, this game is garbage. I wanted to mix it up a bit, because I feel like every Metroid game is worth playing. But as you can see in the yellow box, the game that will fall in here, in my opinion, are not playing again. And I have played some Metroid games that I consider that are not worth playing again. Some may disagree with that, but that's how I see it. So, let's get this started, shall we? <laughs> they start off with Metroid Prime 2. If you follow me and have been through my Metroid playthroughs, it, I have it on YouTube, I, I play this, I think. Or if you've been to my streams or in Twitch, if you ask me which, which is my favorite Metroid game, it's Prime 2. So, I would consider this one almost perfect. I have stumbled upon several people who consider this one trash. I completely disagree. It's just the atmosphere of that game. It's... It was so good. It's... I... Still to this day, even if Retro Studios does not make... Or have an, any plans of doing Prime 2, I really wish we get an HD remaster at the same caliber as Prime 1 remaster because Prime 1 was great but to me Prime 2 elevated that. Some people found some of violence annoying, to me it makes sense and I see Metroid as a sci-fi game with horror elements and the horror in Prime 2 it was it was really good. It's not a horror game, but the, the environment there is just so good. It cemented my love for the franchise, so I, that's why I consider it almost perfect there. I want to replay it again. Maybe I can find some HD packs, texture packs, so I can play it again and stream it. I have it on GameCube, I have it on the Prime Trilogy on the Wii U, but I want a good visual update, you know? And I don't know, I've been itching to play it again, and we'll see, we'll see. But Prime 2 is one of my favorites. Next one, I think this is Prime 3. Since I do not remember much of Prime 3 other than the part of the beginning and around the end, I would say it's worth playing again. Some would say no because of the motion control, but the motion control on a first person shooter game is almost like keyboard and mouse. This game came out like 2007, 2008. You can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but the gameplay on that is just really good. If you enjoyed first person shooters, Prime 3, it really did good. I don't remember much of it, but I'm will replay it soon especially if i want to make a predictions or expectations for prime 4 which i already had things in mind where i talked to a few of my relatives who also love metroid i, I want to express them I, I i cannot wait to play it again and if you 
enjoy motion controls? I would say yeah. And also, it's one of the first Metroid Prime games that actually had voice acting English, because there's some characters here and there. It's also... Hmm. You can, I have to play it again, because there's some areas in the game where you go planet to planet, and you feel alone, and some people would say Prime 3 is the least one where you feel alone, but you're still going on missions. There's hardly any support on that. Um, the, the Galactic Federation. Right around the end, you, you see more people. At uh, the beginning and the end, maybe that's why I remember it more. But it's been years since I've played Prime 3. We'll see. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll stream it. Prime 4, obviously, did not play it. And if you played it on, what they say, July 11th, 2024, if you played it, where's your time travel device? Jokes aside, Metroid Prime Hunters. Uh, I do have some good memories of playing Prime Hunters with some of my school friends on the DS. It was really, really fun. I was curious about the single player though. So, around the hype for Metroid Dread, I played Prime 1 and I played a little bit of Hunters. And I gotta say, this one is not worth playing again. This game got highlighted because of the multiplayer, and the multiplayer is great. Don't get me wrong, it is great. I have fun memories with the multiplayer. But the single player campaign, I would say no. I think I have it on my highlights on Twitch, but I struggled with that game. Not more, not necessarily on where to go but more on moving i have it on the gamepad i have it on the wii u and it to think that it was on the ds i feel like it was more uncomfortable to move around and that did not translate well on the wii u so I don't know, and some of the bosses are such a pain in the butt to fight. Not really the first one, but the second one, and there's a lot of rinse and repeat, there's not a lot of creative stuff in Prime Hunters. It feels more like it was a test for the DS, the capabilities and the controls and all that. I think I remember it was one of the games they showed where you can try out the DS on GameStop. Man, they, they had those back in the day. Not anymore, because try to steal that. But the only game that I can remember that you could try out uh, the DS on was Metroid Prime Hunters. And you can just test out and how it felt. It, it just games feels like that because there's not much creativity in the single player campaign. It build up some characters and other characters like uh, like Silax, who you're seeing in Prime Four, and others that we might see in Prime Four, because that's a race. I don't remember much of their names, but they're pretty different, and they had unique stuff that which made the multiplayer fun. But as a playing it alone, I do not recommend it. I really don't. Federation Force. Now, I've been meaning to get that game. I did not play it, sadly. Not to jump on the bandwagon of people hating this game because we did not get a Metroid game for years, and the one we got is this one, a spin-off. I'm, for one, encourage any Metroid spin-offs. It's Metroid. I love the universe. I love Samus. I love... I want the Chozo lore, so... I feel like Federation Force maybe has that because I've seen some stuff that talks about Silax and I don't know. There is cooking something in here that would build up for Prime 4, but the fan base hated on it and it's not many people would get to cherish it, but I can't really say if it's really granted or not the hate because I haven't played it myself. 
I've heard people that enjoy it, but with friends, kind of like Prime Hunters. I don't know. And, but I haven't personally played it. I would love to get it, but right now, since the Nintendo 3DS eShop is gone and I will have to get it physical, I waited too long on that. I've seen the game around $70, $80, $90. And I probably would get worse as time goes on, but maybe I'll get my hands on it. Just for the sake of that I have it, you know? But I, I didn't play it. There's some lore stuff in here, but I did not play it. Prime Pinball. Um, There's not many pinball games in recent date, and some would say this is like a shovelware and waste of time, but I did play this years ago, and I do remember having fun with it. And this is not anything lore related, it's just a pure spin-off, so... This is just me, so I, I like pinball. Like it's fun, and the stuff that it had, it was had the noises from the pirates. The it had the sound effects, so it was fun. I don't know how much it cost though. DS games, how was it? Forty, thirty-five, thirty-two. A full price pinball game? I would understand. Not many people are interested in that. Especially since pinball <laughs> kind of died down a lot because it's an arcade thing. But in terms of fun, I would say it's a fun game. Not so serious, but if you enjoy pinball and Metroid stuff, I would say yeah. I'd say worth playing again. Oh boy, other M. Uh, I. Let me talk. Let me talk. This pe this game got a lot of undeserved hate because of some things that didn't make sense. But what I remember most on people hating on this game on is that they ruined Samus's character. I don't know how they can ruin Samus's character, but this is the first time. They've done something in trying to flesh out her character, since they've been hinting on for fusion, like the connection with Adam and all that, and I don't know, but I I, I still have fun with that game. I replayed it on the build-up, the hype for Metroid Dread. I thought I would not have fun with it, because maybe it's just a nostalgia thing, maybe it's just me on the time, on the honeymoon phase, but Replaying it, I really enjoyed it. There was some stuff that could have been better with the controls and cutscene choices. Because one thing that people do not like, or another thing that people do not like, is that the fact that Samus had to wait for Adam's instructions to do something. I mean, spoiler warning if you haven't played Other M, but Samus, is, Samus sees Adam as a father figure and a superior officer. She would concede because she trusts him in his decision. And the flashbacks we got, she was the impulsive one and he had to make the tough decision, the rational one, even with sacrifice. And after that event, she left, but I guess over time she just processed all that and how hard it is. She respects them. Deeply, not only as a commander, but as a father. I guess it tr tried to implement that in the game, and in some areas it does work well, but in others it's just weird. I do agree on that, but I found it fine. I found it okay. We can't do the whole losing your items every time you start the game. Come on, guys. But anyway, it, I would say it's a good game. It's a good game. I'm Probably some people clicked off already. I mean, I don't need y'all. You're over emotional on the other end. The hatred was undeserved. It's a good game. I'll preach it forever. All right. Metroid 1 on the NES, the classic Metroid. I'd say no. I would say do not play that. Uh, I do enjoy it. If you want to see how it was what started it all yeah go play it but playing it again 
No, there's no map. You have to do this by memory or by drawing. It was a tough time. When you do get a whole map memorized or drawn out, it's a good game. But play... <sighs> Might as well just put it in there. This is basically Metroid 1. It's a remake. And I would say this one... Oh wait, this one's beginner friendly. And I would say it's worth playing because it fixes a lot of stuff that Metro 1 didn't have. Of course, because of the graphical limitations. But Zero Mission, when this exists, I would say no, do not play that. Another one that I would say do not, not worth playing again is Metroid 2. Because this one exists. Metroid 2 on the Game Boy, the same with Metroid 1. If you want to know how it was back in the day, go try it out. But you'll have the same issues as Metroid 1, where there's no map, you have to figure out where you need to go, and there's no hint or anything that would help you on finding stuff. You have to basically, you're on your own. Which, I would say that's, I guess, the idea they had, that you're on your own, you have to figure out yourself. But when the remakes are around, they still have the same atmosphere of you being alone without figuring out where to go, such a hassle. I think it, it, it serves to be in this spot. Super Metroid. Super Metroid. I played it four or five times. Every time I play that game, it feels like a fresh new game. I hope they do a remake on that. Ever since they started doing the Metroid remakes, we get a new Metroid. Either Prime or Dread. Like, when we got the remake of Zero Mission, I think we had around... I think Prime 2 or Prime 3 was, was gonna come out. And when we got the remake of Metroid 2, they were building up on Dread. If you 100%ed that game, you'd know. So I hope we get a Super Metroid remake, because it's still great, but some quality of life stuff, improvements, that will be awesome. Like, imagine a Super Metroid remake with the engine of Dread. Oh my god. That'd be so good. That'd be so good. And building more on the lore and story... Yeah, I, I would say that. Yeah, I want that. But as of now, I'd still say it's worth playing. It is very much so worth playing. I'm gonna put it there. We got Fusion, which I say it's another beginner friendly. And these ones, I say beginner friendly because they give you a map, they pretty much show you where to go. You getting lost is more on not you not paying attention because they gave you stuff already so you can navigate. Like, go here or go there, you need to do this. The other Metroid games before that, they didn't have that. So, really good fusion. I think I've replayed it three or four times. This is my first Metroid game, by the way, fusion. I think one of my cousins lent it to me. I don't know, whim, I guess? I don't remember much, but he just gave, gave me that game for a while to play it. <laughs> I felt some of the horror vibes because there's a certain enemy there that has the same stuff as you and when you read that it's out looking for you you're mm, i felt the, the the fear but it's a good game because of the aspects i explained already of like it shows you where to go it's it it hand holds you a little bit not so much but it helps <sighs> dread now, I've played this fully once. I've been meaning to replay it again because I want to speedrun it. But I think Dread is almost perfect. There's some aspects of the music that could have been better, but everything else... That game is so good. Oh my god. I think the file I have for Metroid Dread is the... You get touch once you die run? I can see why I haven't touched again. <laughs> I guess it's too hard for me, but 
I would love to speed at that, that game, at least for a little while, to see how everything works. But Metroid Dread, I would say also it's beginner friendly, but these ones do fit more on the spot because this is the very beginning. This is a prequel, Fusion is a prequel to Dread. Another Metroid 2 remake. Now, at the time when this showed up, I remember the fair base hating Nintendo because they shut it down unnecessarily. You, you're not making anything with Metroid, so let us do whatever. And then a year later, we got the official Metroid 2 remake. Funny. It's like they own the IP. I don't know. Anyway. This one, at first, it was really great. The first time playing it, it's good. I really enjoy it. The second time, however, after playing the official remake of Metroid 2, I would say it's beginner friendly. It's in the, it's leaning more not worth playing again for personal reasons, but I would say it's beginner friendly. Because it's like basically Metroid 2 with some updates, but the map layout is basically the same. It has the feel of Fusion and Super Metroid. And this, these people worked on this game, I think one person or two, I correct me if I'm wrong, but they worked for over 10 years on this. And it's sad that it shut down. I mean, even the same creator asked for the community to not hate on Nintendo for this because he makes he makes sense. It's an IP that's not owned by him, so they need to chill out, but they didn't chill out. But anyway, it's I would say it's beginner friendly. And Prime One, Prime One, mm, my God, definitely worth playing. And I would say it's almost perfect. But it's just prime to elevate it that and more. Do I want to keep it there? Ah, uh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> let's do it. All right. That's my tier list. And prime one. You already know prime one. It's already good. The remaster remake came out like last year. Forty bucks. It's a steal. If you haven't played it. It's really great. I will also say it's beginner friendly too because it has stuff that helps someone not get so lost on it, but it, it, it's just really good. Now, I did say chronological order, but I would say it's based on what I feel. Yeah, all right. Worth playing again. This one. And the left to right is like, meaning the one the first row, like, Prime 2, my most favorite. Worth playing again. Highly recommend this one. Beginner friendly is a remission. Not worth playing. Hunters and this one don't even count because we haven't played it. On Federation Force, I would say not worth replaying but i haven't played it myself and hearing that it has lore worthy stuff i would say it's worth playing again but i don't know i would need to get my hands on it so yeah that's my tier list um i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you did not get tilted on some of the things i said that's how i see it and i really would love if uh the metric community like chills more. It takes examples on other communities that do not uh, make a lot of bad games quality wise and they, the community still supports the franchise, still supports the company. We need to learn for that example because the worst Metroid game, I say it's this one, but people would disagree it's other M as they ruin the image for Samus and everything. Samit on Metro related, and yet we still got 
several Metroid games after Other M, so the franchise is not really ruined. But anyway, I don't want to go on a tangent. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tier list video. Uh, if you have your games of the tier list similar to mine or different, let me know in the comment section. And I can have fun with that. And if you can say why, like personal experience, I would love to know. Like for instance, in Prime 2, I have a moment where I had, where I had school friends play the multiplayer. <laughs> Man, I, I wish there was some recording stuff back in the day in the GameCube. We were down to the wire, me and my friend, and we both entered a cannon. And as the, soon as the clock hits zero, both Samus's in the Morph Ball just collide. The screen flashes and you don't know who won until one of the Samus's raises the arm cannon. It was so good. I hope in Prime 4, they not only have a good single player campaign, but I hope they have a good multiplayer as well. I don't know, maybe with Silax in there, maybe we'll mix something with Prime 2 and Prime Hunters, I would love that. Like, imagine more Hunters, like the one we know already, and add, in addition to Prime 3 as well, I would love that. Anyway, I'm gonna keep on rambling if I don't stop myself, but hope you guys have a good rest of your day, night, evening, whenever you see this, and until the next video, which is gonna be speculations on Prime 4, take care, bye-bye. <laughs>